Folks, welcome to So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey. This is part two of Vanderpump of Palooza Fridays. The first part, uh, we did the full reunion recap of the, the part two of the reunion. And folks, that was only three hours. So, I mean, it, it was, it, I mean, I'm, it's getting shorter. Look at this. Look at us <laughs> really condensing all of the information. Um, part two, of course, is going to talk about some of the Vanderpump news out there, speculation on what the big reveal could be. We'll speculate about that. We'll talk about some of the podcast information that has been out there with all of the cast members, just little tidbits, little pieces of information, because the Vanderpump economy is still alive and kicking. And there's a lot of information being put out there. So hopefully we can set up a one-stop shop for you to get some of this information um to you so you so you know it so you go into the weekend going i feel that i am fully prepared to explain vanderpump rules and all the goings ons to my family and friends over the weekend uh how are you guys doing are you good you hanging in there okay good me too it's 9 36 thursday night this is my big swan song i don't i don't think i have to podcast tomorrow and you know what that means just self-loathing in bed <laughs> Just, just, just me self-loathing. Woo! Now, this is funny. On June 13th, DJ James Kennedy is doing his See You Next Tuesday at Sexy Unique Restaurant at Sir, And that night is featuring Mr. Jax Taylor. And I've said this now for the last couple of weeks. I still don't necessarily understand how DJ James Kennedy is featuring Jax Taylor. Because Jax, to my knowledge, does not... You know, it's not like Daft Punk, which would be amazing if both of them come out in robot helmets and DJ, you know, they're both like trading off on the ones and twos. But my fear is this is my nightmare slash greatest wish is that DJ James Kennedy does a song called Send a Vault is a Liar. Send a Vault, you know, do, does that. And then Jax, like he does a whole song and Jax probably like has one line, you know, of like, I fucking hate Tom Sandoval. Like, I'm scared they're going to do a single or something, which would be so cringe, but at the same time, so powerful. Now, cameras, now they've taken a little bit of time off. They were already supposed to be shooting from my sources, but supposedly they are picking up cameras the day before this iconic pairing at Sexy Unique Restaurant. Because I have a feeling, you know, of course this would be on the show and not something that they just did for, for, for shits and giggles. So that leads us to what is this big surprise, right? Where, you know, and they, even if you've seen the trailer for part three, they didn't put this at the end of Vanderpump rules last night, but then they're already airing these trailers. You can find it online where, the, where they're like, you are not, you know, this is going to knock you off your coal mining asses. You like the first two parts? Well, wait till you get your dick kicked in with part three of the Vanderpump Rules reunion. And then it says something of like, the last five minutes are going to turn your pubes white. I mean, it is so intense. And you see all of this, like, you know, Raquel coming out and Schwartz and people. You see Sheena in the trailer going, oh, you see all of these reaction shots. But what I'm now hearing was that we thought it was in the one-on-ones, the one-on-ones with Raquel, Ariana, and Tom. That must be where the big surprise is. Now, Andy uh, did an interview with the Bitch Sesh Girls, like a, a live promotion for his book, which, damn, you know, I, it, it, my, I, I'll just tell you guys, one of my big dreams, I mean, I, I think now they changed their podcast now to... Um, not dumpster something uh, i forgot their new name but they switched it but my dream always had been to be on bitch sesh i would have loved to have been on bitch sesh and now i believe they're going to a patreon only model because you know they're they're the tops but that was my and i, I i'm wondering if that my dream is gone now um but bitch sesh it was like whew, that was my dream but i don't think they know i exist but they did this live interview with andy cohen and Andy Cohen said, hey, listen, there are still, because I think they were asked about this, there are still surprises, but he even seemed like he didn't necessarily know exactly what this big thing was. And then it was put out this week that it was actually in Raquel's talking head. Now, folks, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't want to give you f fake information or anything like that, but 
if it was in the talking head with one other producer and not Andy. So I, I really truly believe what I said last week is that I think what we're going to hear is a timeline manipulation is that Raquel is going to slip or just not even realize she slipped and say something about the timeline. The more I keep hearing and thinking about it and just praying about praying about it, frankly, I'm like, dear baby Jesus and God, please let me know what the secret surprise is. I've been such a good soldier for you guys, please. And um, I think it is going to be that this has been going on a lot longer than we thought. I don't think she's pregnant. <laughs> I don't think that. I do think eventually we will get a diagnosis of some sort about Raquel um, and, and a little bit more information on that. But people have just, you know, really, we, we just get so out of hand. We're so excited about all of this. And we tend to use that in certain negative ways. And we push these kind of negative slants where we've got this big negative thing right here, this huge cheating scandal. That's pretty negative, but we want more and more and more. And that's the thing that kind of like, you get you get bummed because you're like, guys, what? Are, it's right here. Why do we keep making up things like she's pregnant or she tried to unalive herself or or something like that? And and I've said this multiple times. Thing, if it was something like, you know, unaliving yourself or something that serious, know that there are rules put in place that they wouldn't be promoting it the way they're promoting it, and it would single handedly take Raquel out of the picture in terms of a season 11 conversation completely. And I think that would be for, you know, if somebody ever, you know, harmed themselves, my goodness, goodness gracious. No, no, no. I mean, it should, that we, everything should be shut down if that was the case. So, um, but I do think the timeline is going to be something that this has been going on a lot longer. Um, I think there are other things that are going to come out even after we wrap this season is that I think you're potentially going to find out that there are more uh, cheating incidents um, I think there is going to be a pattern of behavior that comes to light. Um, so I think that's a big thing. I think, you know, the other thing that kind of made sense to me, but they still swear against it, is that like one producer knew potentially, or, you know, I was thinking about that talking head. What if Raquel was in that talking head? I'd be like, I love him. I will say this is that somebody pointed this out to me and I was like, well, she's just, she's wearing the same talking head outfit was that when when Raquel in the finale, when she was like in that, like she was like, huh, I just want, I wanted to know what it felt like to be close with somebody I loved. And that's why I had sex with Sandoval. But she was wearing the same outfit she was doing talking heads in pre Scandival. So the fear, I mean, the, the weird part, the fear, the conspiratorial part that I hate of myself said, like, oh my God. What if this one producer had footage of this or so, and that's why she is wearing the same outfit because this same talking head was done months before this scan of all broke. Uh, but that I, I don't think is the case. It's just going by that same talking head outfit. Can you imagine the person just stumbling by this podcast right now and going like, I never watched Vander. What is this? What is this guy literally losing his mind over? So I think it is going to be the timeline thing. Um, but they keep saying it might make people not sign a contract for season 11. And I, I think that's a little bit of showmanship. I think that is just teasing this out. I think Alex Baskin, obviously just like keeping the people engaged, but man, you gotta, you gotta let us, <laughs> Alex evolution. You have to let, let us free, please <laughs> let, 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 release us, release us from Vanderpump rules season 10. <laughs> I need to see my family again. <laughs> I need, I need to pay it to, I've literally gained a bunch of weight. I need to get healthy again. This is not healthy for any of us. I mean, listen, there's a new season of Real Housewives of Orange County on next week and nobody's talking about it. I watched it this week. It was good. It was good. We'll talk about it next week. Um, so I think that's it. The other thing I do want to, I do want to give credence to, and I think is happening or in the works is I do think the Vanderpump Valley is potentially moving forward. And I think that is something, you know, with Jax and Brittany and Dodie. And I think Sheena would be the entrance point on that show. So I think Sheena is the entrance point on Vanderpump Valley. That is my speculation. Is that she, just like Brandy handed off Beverly Hills to Vanderpump Rules through that scene with Brandy and Sheena. I believe Sheena is going to be the bridge between Vanderpump Rules and Vanderpump Valley. And if you study just the amount of podcasting they're all doing together, I think Sheena is the logical choice. And they also, Sheena has a kid, Brittany has a kid. 
Um, I, I do believe this is in the works. I believe this is being talked about as we speak. And I also think you are going to pass off things like that. DJ James Kennedy, Jax Taylor, Sir Knight. See you next Tuesday. I think that is a potential bridge scene as well. So you will have, because there is interest. I mean, if anything, these podcasts and all of these old Vanderpump Rules people coming back, you see that there is this kind of interest that people do want to know. Um, and I was even like, I don't even think I want to know that much. But yeah, I'm curious. And the ratings are so damn good on this is that, you know, you guys know, like I do, it's when, when the iron's hot, you got to hit it. And then you really got to beat it into the ground where people are fucking sick of it. And that's my fear is that they are going to like now look at this gift and go, we've got to exploit this in every way possible. And we are going to make sure you are sick of anything Vanderpump Rules related after next year. I also have thought like, and you, you know, Schwartz and Sandy's I think is big, is big in play in terms of they are going to use that. You know, I think you're going to see a Schwartz Sandoval. Um, are we friends or aren't we, you know, uh, you're, I think you're going to see that storyline. I think it'll be a little bit of save Schwartz and Sandy's. I think we are going to meet some of the cast of Schwartz and Sandy's, but I think that was always the plan because when I had talked to that manager, Brett back in December, when we were, when, you know, when we still followed each other on Instagram, he even mentioned, because he was like, yeah, I'm going to be on the show a little bit. This is going to be featured on the show. And it seemed like they were potentially angling for and, and for a business like that, that would be a huge boon for Schwartz and Sandoval to have this featured. And you can kind of see where, you know, after this season, there would be, I mean, we're talking big time underdogs. Um, but, you know, what we've seen too is that a lot of women don't care. They're still popping by. Listen, my friend... Uh, my friend Mindy sent me a picture with her and her mom, like with Schwartz at, at Schwartz and Sandy's. At the end of the day, don't feel bad for any of these people. It's not changing any of the truly. I mean, the, the thing about Sandoval is that this would have gone much quicker, except that he's literally out on the road with his tits out every day, you know, and it's making it even harder to get over this because he's literally in your face singing some of the worst cover songs out there. It's like just hitting these high notes that he's not necessarily hitting and just continually out on the road. But Schwartz, it, life remains the same. We're still at the same kind of like, oh, I feel bad for Schwartz, man. We're still, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Things will get back to a relative normalcy. Um, but you can picture those things of like, yeah, in the back of my head, I could see Jackson Sandoval having a scene. I could see how, them having a big argument. And then at some point I could see even them making up. You know, this Ariana like wish or hope of everybody staying away will only go on for just a little bit. And then I think people will realize they're on a reality television series. And then also like Sheena, you do get the sense that Sheena is a very feeling person. And whereas people have called her an opportunist or just, you know, at the same time, I think this season has highlighted that she's genuinely a good friend that cares about people and and is I, I think I think she um, I think I think she will forgive people quicker because I think she at the end of the day is like, well, everybody's human. Uh, by the way, that's a clip you see in next week of Sandoval crying of like, I'm human. I make mistakes. And that is true. Right. I, I mean, that's what I keep reminding myself uh, every time I don't go to work out. I'm like, I'm human. I make mistakes. It's like, yeah, man, but there are bigger mistakes than others. And you are human and you are making mistakes. I think the thing with reality series, and especially when one lasts for 10 seasons, is that we see some of these people making the same mistakes and then they're covering up and they're lying on top of it. So it gets no ba no better for them. It, it, in fact, gets more nefarious. It gets more evil. There's a sense of like, dude, where did you ever think they like this? These, this, these TV cameras, they rotted your brain, dude. Like what? And like I always say, and I've warned for the last like month and a half is, you know, we, we were putting Ariana on this pedestal that is going to be too intense for her to stay up on. Like the air has got to be crazy up on this pedestal. We, we put her up so high that she is bound to fall from that at some point. Like you can't keep this up. This is too intense. 
So those are the things and I do think uh, Lisa, the, the Vanderpump Vegas thing is always going to be in the back of my head just because I don't understand why they introduced Oliver as a character and they seem to be pushing him a couple of times now. And it's always in regards to Vanderpump Vegas and with the shutting down of pump restaurants. You know, there is this thing that I'm like, well, that could be it as well. So there's a lot of things in play and we will find out next Wednesday on the finale of Vanderpump Rules. But don't worry, then after that, we have a Secrets Revealed episode, which better be the fucking easiest secrets in the world because my poor heart can't help it. Now, listen, everybody has an opinion on Vanderpump Rules right now. We have what I call, like always, the Vanderpump economy, and everybody wants a piece. It's so, ooh, let me talk about it. I, I don't even watch the show. Let me talk about it. So everybody's talking about it these days. Now, when I say everybody's talking about it, who... In your, I want you to picture this in your head. When I say this person, even if they don't know anything about it, they need to let you know their opinion on everything. Who is it and why is it Bethany Frankel? Great guess. You were right. Bethany Frankel. Bethany Frankel today on her, uh, which by the way, Bethany Frankel has a new YouTube show where she's just giving her opinions on beauty and dollar stores and everything. She's great. I used to love Bethany Frankel so damn much on Housewives. I even loved all the, the Bethany ever after, Bethany getting married, all the Bethany prequels and sequels. I loved it all. And then somehow it just got, you know, it's like fame is such an interesting thing because originally we saw Bethany trying to make a life for herself and get money and stuff. And I thought that was the goal is to become rich, like, you know, and like powerful. And she did all of that. But then I started to realize with Bethany or how it felt to me and how it came off was, no, it really wasn't about all that. She wants to be famous. She wants she wants to give her opinion on everything. It's not about the money. It wasn't about that. It was about I I need more. I need I need you to, to hear every one of my thoughts on everything, even if I don't know. So this is Bethany, uh, her comments on Vanderpump Rules, and she does make some interesting comments in regards to walking us through what a reunion is like. But I think at this point. A lot of us that are listening and, and watch these shows kind of know, but here's Bethany with her two cents, even though she does not watch the show. Keeps talking to me about the Scandal reunion. So I haven't watched Vanderpump Rules. I know I'm the only person, <laughs> and I keep hearing about Tell us this more. cheating scandal which to me sounds like a cheating scandal, but it's gotten so much media attention that it seems to be so much more than that. And there's a reunion coming up. So let me tell you what that's like. Everybody is in their own head and talking to producers, trying to get producers to tell them what they want to hear and what's going to happen. And every single producer is telling every single person on the show whatever will make the best ratings, meaning, no, you should say it to her. You should absolutely say it to him. Of course you should. Yes, you were right and they were wrong. No, of course, this is your time to get your word out. And everybody's telling everybody pretty much the same thing just to make sure that the ratings on the show will do well. And my opinion of the scandal is that I had never heard of any of these people, and now I have. So the three of them are way more famous than when they started. And Woo! you wouldn't be on the reality show if you didn't want to be relevant. So all of them are getting so many more opportunities. And even the show, the whole show and all the other castmates are way more famous and it's given all their careers a, careers a bump. So while infidelity is real, just like <laughs> anything else you would see on The Housewives, it's been incredible for their careers. And this is an elective sport. Being on a reality show is an elective sport. You are electing to participate in additional stress in your life. This is not stress from your kids, from your finances, from your marriage, from your career. This is elected st elective stress. So you're saying, I'm maybe going to be on anti-anxiety medication. I may be going to take antidepressants. I'm going to live something out in the media, but I'm going to whore it out because I'm on reality television. And so that alone is a concept. So right now they are preparing for game day and somebody's always winning and somebody's always losing. So how you handle this is critical. Thanks, Bethany. <laughs> Thanks, B. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously there's a lot of truth there, but it is interesting to hear Bethany. I mean, first off, you know it's going to be good when somebody's like, I've not watched it, but let me tell you everything I think about it. And I always, with Bethany, it's one of those things I, I'm always hesitant because she just wants attention. So it is, you're like, ah, but... She has the history, so she does have that knowledge that we don't sometimes. 
But it is interesting also when she talks about it, she's like, yeah, cheating is a thing, but this is how it helps careers. And this is, and that's how I feel like she views everything, which is really dark of like, well, now they've got so many more followers. They got so much more attention. Like at some point I was like, thought she was about to say, I'm, I'm, I just, I just applied to work at sir. I mean, I'll be an older cocktail server, but it would be great. Who do I need to fuck? It is interesting though. She'll be like, yeah, people will, you know, have, make scenes to, to get, you know, to have a storyline. You really see how Bethany comes at it. Now I'm shocked though, because she really does have a mind for production yet her show. What was it? The B with Bethany, the HBO max show. Oh, the big shot with Bethany. I watched every episode of that and it was a mess. Could have been so good. It was a mess. And I was like, Oh, this will be great for Bethany. I really saw before I watched that show, I thought this could be like the apprentice. I think Bethany is so entertaining when she has that right format and she was producing it and it was not good. By the end, she was letting Bryn fire people. She was like, I didn't know what to do. So I let Bryn pick who was getting fired this week. And I was like, oh my God, what am I wanting? Like, usually viewers want to know that whoever's in charge of this show, you know, you, they're, you're like, I trust you as a storyteller. At the end, I was like, are they going to even have, are they going to make it to the end of this show? It just seems so haphazard and weird. Um, so that was Bethany's thoughts. We can't live without Bethany's thoughts. Now, here is another person. Now, when you when I say Bethany Frankel, who do you think is the, I mean, less rich version of Bethany Frankel that needs to give his opinions on everything and uh, wasn't a huge, you know, this is another guy that cracks me up because he didn't, he, he didn't like, I mean, he wasn't a viewer of Vanderpump Rules at first and then it got going and then now he's all into it again. He's all into it, but he's not like he's apparently a Vanderbump Rules in Atlanta. Sorry, a Beverly Hills in Atlanta, a more a housewife guy. Of course, I'm speaking of Michael Rappaport. And, you know, if there is attention to be had, this guy is running full steam at it. And as a fellow straight man, I feel like I'm so I mean, I want to be the antithesis of Michael Rappaport, even though I would love to talk to him. Um, but it's just like, dude, give it a rest. I am tired sometimes of people that do not watch every season that throw in and think they've got it all figured out and they know, and they're going to tell you when it's when enough's enough and when they need to keep going. And you're like, you're right. You, you talk so much that, yeah, like three things out of 10 you say are right. But if you talk that much, you're bound to hit three. Like, listen, I'm the same way. I talk so much that at least every three hours, I say at least four right things. And if you distill that, if you just put it like, this guy was right four times, you'd think I was a genius. But then you're like, he talks three hours. Here's Michael Rappaport letting us know what we should be doing about Scandal at this point. Kennedy, DJ James Kennedy, does he have a, a urinary track issue that we need to discuss? Because... I get that you're pissed off, but why are you going to the bathroom every three minutes? Like, I mean, is there something going on? Because I got a great urinary guy in Beverly Hills, the great Dr. Sachs. Hit him up. He's right there on third, right there at Cedar sinai DJ James Kennedy, because you're obviously the MVP right now of the guys. You are the MVP, but then Schwartzy... Uh, 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 love him, hate him, be frustrated with him when he's whipping out his Xanax before Rachel, a.k.a. Raquel, a.k.a. that Bambi-eyed bitch comes on the stage. You're like, oh, this is why we love Schwartzy. He keeps going in a YouTube video and the YouTube video was has Vanderpump Rules gotten too toxic? And I don't have specific clips because it was a lot. Um, so I was giving you a little taste of the funny stuff. But, you know, it's always funny that people that ask these questions that don't seem to actually like, yeah, there's probably toxicity to this. I mean, there's toxicity to a lot of what we deal with in life these days, whether it be politics, sports, our own personal lives. But luckily, this will be over in two weeks. But toxicity exists usually because something was done wrong, right? There, there was something that made us angry. There was something that made us upset. There was something that we were railing against. And this happened to be really, really dark. Now, I was thinking about this. I was taking a dinner break in between the three-hour one and this one. And I got into a, a DM conversation. And usually, I don't get to see a lot of my DMs, but I was I was eating and I was opening DMs. And I got this one from a, a nice lady. Um, sorry, I'm not going to give her name out. But she was asking me, uh, she was talking about how we view women on this show. And 
it was talking about Lala, Ariana, Katie, and she, you know, she wasn't slamming me or something, but I've had not issues with Lala, but my, 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 not everybody hears everything I say. So it's like, I say a lot of things about Lala and I say a lot of things about Katie, a lot of things, but um, she was talking about, you know, people celebrating Ariana. And I know Lala had done an interview this week where she talked about the perfect victim of being the perfect victim. And I think that's such an interesting concept. My, my thing with Lala is I sometimes feel the hypersexualization, the loud, all of that stuff. To me, sometimes it's a character and, and, for me, at times, the character, I'm just like not as excited to see a character when I know there is so much depth behind that character that is truly fascinating to me. Like I was more fascinated seeing or hearing her talk about some of her struggles on the reunion this week in regards to Randall. To me, that is fascinating. To me, that is strength. To me, when I talked about that three hours of, of Randall passing off her child to Lala in the driveway, that's the shit that like, wow, wow. To have to do with, deal with that, to have to fight for your daughter, to have to make enough money for these legal fees, to have to, like, to me, that is the story time and time again. Now, I think she is hysterical. She has an acid tongue. I've always called her a verbal assassin. And, you know, I said, man, Tom better watch out. And we're seeing that, of course. But for me, and maybe this is as I get older, the pomp and circumstance, the big character, I don't necessarily care as much. You know, because I know how much heart is uh, underneath there, but it's sometimes I find it hysterical. It, you know, it's similar to DJ James Kennedy in a way. But anyways, and, and the same thing with Katie, because I, I, she was saying, well, why do and I don't think she was saying me specifically, but why do we all celebrate Ariana so much when what about these other women? And for me, like I'm a dude, like I don't necessarily know <coughs> if I should be throwing my two. I mean, these are just my two cents. This isn't. um the end all be all. And I do enjoy conversations like that when I'm able to have them, but I don't like, if you guys write me and stuff, there's like, I would say a 15% chance or less that I will actually see it or write back at this point. So I'm very sorry. Do not get angry about it. I will see that sometimes where I haven't responded to somebody cause I didn't see it. And then they'll like write back three months later and call me an asshole. And it's like, I, I, I'm so sorry. Like, trust me, you would, <laughs> it just, it's a, it's a lot of shit. Like, and I, I mean, it's a lot of good stuff, but it's a lot. So, Anyways, um, I thought this was an interesting conversation because once again, I'm like, well, I feel like this is pitting women against women again of like, well, can't you appreciate things about everybody? I've been critical about Talala because I believe there have been such hypocritical moments in her past and even in how she was treating Raquel in the beginning of the season. But at the same time, I'm somebody that actually genuinely likes to learn. I do root for people. I do love to hear these other sides. But for me, what's fascinating is really what's underneath. That might not be as fascinating for other people to watch on a reality television show, but I've really enjoyed reading and finding out other things about Lala as this process has gone on. So I, I am a Lala fan. And I, I, uh, I, but also, I think this was like, oh, does she trigger you with her or her being? I know I'm paraphrasing, so I'm sorry. But I was like, no, Lala doesn't trigger me at all. I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't get triggered by Lala. But it was interesting because you you want to like then look at check yourself sometimes and go, okay, well, what? How do I feel about women? But it is interesting is that I'm I'm sitting here thinking about how I feel with women and 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 like, well, why do I like this one and why don't I like this one? When it's like, wait. Once again, we're we're covering up this conversation about the men in Vanderpump Rules. There's some real dogs in there. Even like I said in the first part, we're loving DJ James Kennedy now. We're giving him roses after roses. I mean, we're giving him more roses than we are Lala every week. And at the same time, at the reunion this week, it comes out that, you know, he slapped some girl's ass and they had to have her sign paperwork so she didn't file a suit against the casino in Atlantic City. I mean, listen, he's funny as hell, but that's a dark comment. And we just skated right over it because alcohol was involved. But that shit is going to come back in, in, in play. So you have these women, you have Katie Maloney, who I was lucky enough to speak to this week. And Katie's very funny because even talking to her, I realized she was like, she was slowly, which you should be doing. She was thinking about her answer. She was, she was like, you know, in, she was like, how do I want to answer this? And she was really parsing her words. And, and, you know, it's like, I vomit from the mouth very fast. And she was, okay, how do I want to answer this? And I thought that was really cool and beautiful and, and uh, admirable because she was trying to clearly communicate her thoughts. And she did, 
But for me, and I've told you guys this all season long, even pre scannable she did one of the hardest things in life that most people don't do is that made a choice for herself and her own mental health and her own heart. I mean, she made a very tough decision because I know she loves Tom Schwartz. And I know in Tom Schwartz's way, he thinks he loves Katie or, you know, he loves, but like that line Katie said earlier in the season, I know he loves me. I just don't think he likes me very much. And that, oh, the tears, ah. <laughs> but also I was thinking about that line with Lala saying, uh, Ariana, you know, the perfect victim line. And you could say that, but for me with Ariana in particularly, the 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 I've always even before I knew Ariana I um I always looked up to her in terms of what she said on the show how she went about things how she communicated about the world um it just lined up with my personal beliefs so that was somebody I always rooted for and it wasn't about like right now like oh wow she is the whole package when it comes to having sympathy for somebody i also didn't feel like ariana needed protected because i feel like as you can see with this reunion and how she's handled this whole thing she does a pretty damn good job sticking up for herself and really there's another person i keep using communicating effectively because she just does that is something that i'm so impressed with with anybody and something i try to learn from each week is like i, I can be better at communicating but she's done great. But uh, I'm trying to find this quote from Lala. It was from the LA Times article. Um, they interviewed Lala, I believe, last week. And, uh, you know, I just found this aspect of the interview fascinating. Um, sorry. Da, da, da. Uh, guys, talk amongst yourselves for a second. We're going to. OK, this is the Los Angeles Times. It was called Vanderpump Rule star Lala Kent on Life After Randall Emmett by Amy Kaufman and Meg James. They also were the ones that broke the amazing story about Randall Emmett. And they uh, they were talking about this season um, and they're asking her, hey, if you're totally honest, you must have known there was something going on. They're talking about Lisa saying that to Lala. Um, trying to find this quote. Maddox has found an army of support from viewers and castmates who've brought flowers, wine, and healing crystals to the Valley Village home. They've brought healing crystals? Are, does she have like healing crystals to spare? Wow. That she and Sandoval are still uncomfortably sharing. Uh, she landed a lifetime role and a spot on the upcoming season of ABC's Dancing with the Stars. Bloomingdale's and Bic Razor assigned her to promotional deals. But Kent and her story of betrayal have not engendered a similar outpouring of support. And uh, Raquel Gates, a film and media studies professor at Columbia University, suggested that troubling cultural tropes could have helped explain why viewers root for Maddox, but look skeptically at Kent. Women have to be perfect victims in order for them to get any kind of sympathy, Gates said. And they talk about Lala having a shark, sharp tongue, the things that she said, like Michael Vick fighting dog, Bambi-eyed bitch, yapping chihuahua, epitome of a fucking loser, all of those put it on a t-shirt quotable lines, except for the Michael Vick one talked about bragging about uh, letting Randall hit it on the first night. Uh, this is one of many things Lala said on the show for shock value. Emmett said in a statement, Randall, um, the situation sparked a perception that Kent was a man stealing gold digger to see a young, beautiful girl and an older, not so in shape guy. People just assumed the worst said Sheena Shea, Kent's closest castmate on Vanderpump rules. Um, they talked about Randall's relationship with her being secretive at first. And when he was separated, it was all a bit of a mess. Lisa Vanderpump says in the inter interview, Lisa says she has sometimes had some low points and she struggled with wouldn't say it's public humiliation because I think she won. Of course she was the victim. Kent says, if I were listening to this story, I wouldn't believe it. She acknowledged in an interview with the times. I get it. I know the optics. I know how the outside world looks at me. Uh, they talk about the send it to Daryl merch. Um, they talked about the Randall scandal, all of this stuff, but the perfect victim little quote there, uh, from Miss Gates stood out to me is that Lala has not gotten the same sympathy. People have not rushed to her defense. Now, I think that is an easy way out sometimes of like, well, I guess that's just the case, but there are reasons why that is. And I don't think it's just that Ariana is the perfect victim. I think there's a lot of elements. I, I was talking, uh, I was DMing with that girl earlier and I said, you know, with Lala, I remember, I'm old enough to remember a day when this all went down. 
when there was a mystery man, you know, Lala said it was a sports player, but it was Randall. You know, there was a lot of things. And, and when we did find out it was Randall, I mean, Randall isn't the perfect, you know, he looks like Randall. He acts like Randall. Randall had already had a reputation at that point. Remember the Lindsay Lohan stuff? I mean, Randall had been around the block. So we weren't thinking Randall was amazing as an audience. I remember being in Facebook groups where we were tearing that dude apart. He was being picked over like a dog with a bone and just not what we considered a great dude. Not for our Lala. But it was also funny because, he, you know, he was already embroiled in controversy because he was allegedly married. She says separated when they actually met. But Randall's one of those people. And I think that's why he was successful so much early on in his career is that he he made everybody like him. He would buy every he would take everybody everywhere. Do this, do that. It, you know, that's magical. When you have somebody that can make things happen and money isn't an object, you're like, holy shit, where I mean, where why aren't my friends all like, why aren't my friends throwing down and flying me everywhere? What are you talking about? And I'm not just talking about with Lala, he would do it with all of them. So that's really exciting at first. Um, but uh Randall, you know, he was somebody we all kind of thought was uh. Eh. We actually started to like him more once he was on the show. Lala gave a little bit of her credibility and it gave it to him and it made him look more palatable. Then we were like, oh, maybe he is a good guy. He seems like really into Lala. And Lala would say amazing things about him at every turn, every turn. I mean, the sun, you know, Rosen fell right under Randall Emmett. And uh, I remember Randall Emmett came into my acting studio once with Lala and gave a talk to all of the actors on a Tuesday night. And he was incredible. He commanded the room. I think I was one of the only people who even knew who Lala was in that room. I still, I should go back and find those pictures because it was hysterical. We all have to take our shoes off. So I remember Randall was in like Versace socks. And I took a picture of that because I thought it was like, wow, I have old Navy socks. That's wild. He pulled up in a Ferrari. It was just like a whole bit. And he did this cool thing, which when Lala was on the show years ago, I, I mentioned was that he said, hey, Everybody, put your name and your number down. I'm going to pass this page around. Put your name and number. I'm getting every one of you guys an audition from my casting director. And we were like, holy shit. This guy is amazing. This guy is the real deal. I was like, holy shit. Did any of us ever get called? No, but that's not the point. We left feeling good. And I have a feeling Randall does that a lot. Promise is big, makes you feel good, and then nothing happens. Um. So then when all of this shit came out, but by the, by the way, also, we started hearing little rumblings that he was a creep. I had a lot of people, I've been doing this now for three years. I had a lot of people in my DMs that said he did some, re, like sent sent or requested nudes, sent some wild texts. I mean, the guy has been around the block. And I had women that opened up, not women that wanted me to ever share their stories, and nor would I without permission. I mean, one, I did say, hey, would you want me to put you in contact with the LA Times? They're like, no, 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 no. Um, but uh, what I think, though, with Tom is that we kind of like Tom from the jump in some ways. And also, we, we knew Tom when he was younger. We kind of grew with Tom over 10 years, and we thought we were seeing him turn into this really kind of cool, wild, weird dude that really loved his girl, was very honest, very, you know, that, that's who I thought I was putting my, my reality show support behind. But with Randall, I never felt that kind of affinity. I felt affinity for Lala and, you know, Lala used a little of her juice to make him palatable and it all fell down. So the perfect victim is, is weird because I understand that sentiment, but it's just, it's not, it's comparing apples and oranges. We didn't rally around Lala because I mean, it is, it, there is an interesting thought to be had there. Now that I'm thinking about it is we didn't rally around Lala because we thought Lala should have known potentially, but then that now I'm now I'm just kind of like, free um, free balling or free thinking is uh and a lot of us then when i do see negative things about ariana it's like well she should have known we do then like well why wouldn't she have known he, he, i think he's creepy i get this feeling it's very interesting but also there's so many elements to this because this was fully on the show and they've been main characters on the show randall had only done one season and he was kind of lied about for a season um so there's a lot of reasons why we didn't kind of stand behind lala but the good news is I think Lala has presented such a case. By the way, she's on The View. She's on The View on Tuesday. I can't wait to see Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg hates talking about Vanderpump Rules. So it'll be great to have Lala on there. And I think Lala will kill it. I think Lala will crush it. I'm glad. I'm glad for any of these guys getting attention from this. 
except for Sandoval at this point. I, like I keep saying, just die down for a do- bit, dude. Like just die out. Even though my prediction is watch what happens live comes back this Sunday. They've been on a two week break, which I've been bummed about. Cause I love watch what happens live. I have a feeling, I have a feeling Wednesday night. I have a feeling Tom Sandoval will be the guest. And if not that, I believe the next Wednesday at the secrets revealed, but I believe that Tom Sandoval will be the guest. Also, could the big reveal be that they actually just genuinely are still together? Who knows? But I wanted to talk a little bit about that, about how we feel about the women. And I feel like we do talk about this a lot. And like this woman we like and this woman we don't like when I'm like, wow, there's all of these men out there that we can really just sink into. But I say this every week. It it feels like we already um, just we already just already know men are stupid and men are trash. So we don't even bother. Like, oh, boys will be boys. Ah, they put their dick in a toaster if they could, which I have, and it's not fun. Um, But with women, we really dig into. Like, I'm, like, sitting here, like, racking my brain of, like, thinking, well, what do I really feel? (laughs) It's like, wait, well, how have I? Huh. You know, this is something I will actually think about tonight when I could just be thinking about all of this other dangerous crap that we're ignoring because DJ James Kennedy says really funny, amazing quotes and, like, talking heads. He's funny as fuck. So I keep saying, I like DJ James Kennedy. If he can keep going down this path, just don't blow it, dude. Don't blow it. I don't know. So I was thinking about that, but I did want to talk about that perfect victim uh, thought. Okay, so let's get into the uh, the podcasting a little bit. We've had a. It is so confusing how many Vanderpump podcasts and information. Every you know, so much shit just floating around the Vanderpump sphere. And uh, let's see if we can dig in a little bit. Now, I want to thank Sandra Medica. I want to thank Marissa. I want to thank Amy Field. They all have like helped throw information my way. I'll just be like, because they have a text thread. They'll go back and forth, back and forth. And I'm always like last to the text thread. And I get so confused. My dyslexia always, so I can't scroll up. And I'll just get confused. So I'll read the first thing that's there. And I've missed like 30 things. But I just say, anything Vanderpump, just Put it in the notes. Just just throw it up there. Throw a picture in there, whatever you want. Um, let's see, latest. Okay, so here is some notes. Plus, uh, these are, some of these are screenshots from Reddit, it looks like. And I just started this uh, following, I think this is a brand new account, Vanderpod Recaps, where this person, I don't, um, I don't know if this is a girl or a guy, it's additional war 8759 here from Reddit. They're new, but they tagged me in one because they actually had a Reddit thread of my interview with Katie, which I didn't think I had a lot of like dirt in the Katie interview, but I'm not like, I, I don't think I wish I was like, it's like, I'm, I want to make the guests comfortable, whatever they're wanting to tell me. And hopefully we get something good along the way, but I didn't feel like there was a lot of dirt, nor did I need it. Cause I was just really happy to talk to them. But this person has compiled a great amount of stuff as well. So it is worth checking out this account, but uh, let's see Sheena's podcast. I think this was with uh, Jax. Maybe they were talking about Jax's merch, which we talked about last week. He has like a number one guy in the group shirt. So even Jax now who was making fun of the merchandise of everybody else before this is now in on the merch game. Uh, Sheena also revealed she's invited to Lindsay and Carl's wedding. Lindsay and Carl's wedding. So I'm sure Ariana's invited too. I'm sure Tom Sandoval is not invited. In fact, Carl talked about how he unfollowed Tom Sandoval recently after hanging out with Ariana. Um, Lindsay and Carl's wedding will be fun, but Lindsay is that Lindsay. Okay. Interesting. Sheena's not as like angry as Lindsay, but there is some Lindsay Sheena crossover vibes. If you know what I'm saying, like in terms of how they approach things and Lindsay, I have a feeling this will be a star studded. And when I mean star studded, I mean reality stars wedding. I'm going to see if I can maybe like be a bartender there or something. Sheena did bring up that she reached out to Tom. I mentioned this earlier after Tom's best friend, Allie passed away. And she also said others have reached out to Sandoval from the cast, but she didn't name names, but no one has heard back from Tom. She said she even tried two messages and she thought the first one, it uh, didn't go through potentially, or, or maybe the first one, it was green. So she didn't know if she was blocked. And then the second one just didn't go through at all. So I thought that was, um, that was interesting to say the least. Right. Um, now this is interesting because vile files 
or the Viali Fialis, as I like to call it. Uh, this is there from their June 1st episode. Uh, Nick had Brad Kearns or Brad X Brad on Instagram. And that is one of Ariana's best friends along with Logan. Um, and Brad, I was shocked. I mean, I shouldn't be shocked anymore. Brad did Nick Viles podcast because Brad is kind of, you know, he's a friend. He's, you know, you, you know him if you, you see Ariana's Instagram, but he's not out there you know, trying to be on the show and this or that. And he was another one of those people that were at, was at Coachella when we were at Coachella and, you know, they have a whole tight group of friends and he's one of them. So, and I will say, I think some people were like, Oh, well, why, that's weird that he's on it. But Ariana gave him permission. Like anybody that has spoken out from Ariana's camp has gotten permission. So um, he provided a lot of insight. Uh, let's see. Nick starts out the episode by saying that he wanted James and Allie uh, but couldn't get them. So he settled for Brad. Well, that's a good way to make somebody feel welcome. Nick. Ooh, I got some good dirt on Nick, but I can't say, uh, I got to keep it. Um, I hear James and Allie. They're very, um, I don't know if it's protective is the word. I think James will be doing Sheena's podcast, but even remember when Jackie Schimmel was on my podcast, like a month and a half ago. And Jackie was like, or maybe it was, I don't know if this is off mic. But Jackie said she offered James 5000 or told Allie that she would offer James $5,000 to come on. And they turned it down. And I, I thought that was amazing. I was like hysterical. And Jackie doesn't really even have guests. Um, more insight on Joe, which is the friend with Schwartz, says that uh, they cut ties early on. Her energy was weird, didn't vibe with her. She was only around their friend group for a short time. Brad, Logan, Meredith are the three people that are in everyday contact with Ariana. You know, out of the three, Meredith, you probably know the least. And I think that's good. I think there should be one friend that is not out there doing podcasts, doing, you know, and I think Meredith, uh, you know, I haven't talked to her in a very long time, but I think Meredith is a solid, solid individual and uh, I think she is not out there for any sort of fame or any. And I think that is so necessary. You saw her a couple of times in that finale just because she was there, but she wasn't trying to jump in and say lines. I, you know, and so I, th I always like, OK, at least no matter what happens, Meredith, to me, is a great person to have around. Um, you know, Brad says a lot of things that we all know. You know, this wasn't expected. Uh, she he does say Tom, Ariana, Brad spent Valentine's together at Schwartz and Sandy's after, I guess, Tom and Ariana had dinner. Raquel joined. Schwartz and Joe also joined. Brad said Ariana and Tom talked until 6 a.m. the night that this was found out, which, man, and I think Brad was, like, texting her, like, every 15 minutes or had Ariana text him every 15 minutes to, like, make sure she was okay. But they must have just been hashing this out. Man. Now, this is where, and that, God, I know, I know this is bad, but I'm like, they have cameras outside. I hope so. Like they could get this footage. Come on, Brad. Uh, let's see here. Uh, saying Tom changed in the last year. And he did say, I saw a clip of it saying that, you know, he's like, Tom has always been a good person. And he was, you know, he was, that, that's why this is even more shocking. Cause he just, he was, you know, and I'm not saying he's not going to be again. I'm just saying this is so Mm, just so not good. <laughs> is, that, is that the word? No, so not good that it just makes you rethink a lot of things about him. And rightfully so. I think right now, Tom potentially is in this place of being pissed off at the cast and all of us for disliking him when it's like, dude, you've got to understand at some point you've created this mess you're in. You have to understand how humanity and human behavior works, that we are going to be angry. You have to wait that out and you can't then just get mad at us. You got to, you got to chill out. You've got to understand this is going to be going on for a long time. And if your ego can get out of the way, which it seems like it never has this last year, you, you, I mean, you, you have a really this unique opportunity for one of the, the, one of the hardest learning experiences of your life, but just God, I hope he's learning something. And I just think when I feel like he's not responding back to Sheena and I heard that like, well, fuck her. They're all kind of like, come on, dude. You don't think Sheena has every fucking right to be as pissed as she, you saw her crying at the reunion. You don't think Ariana has every right to be mad. Like, I'm sorry if Tom's going to be then like, I'm not going to text back. Like that's just, then Tom's still in that same place. Um, 
Brad says, you know, this past year, it seemed, didn't seem like the same person anymore, but they've had so they've had so many amazing times over the past 10 years of friendship he's had. Uh, Tom texted him the Friday where everyone found out asking why Brad would do him like this. So I guess Tom texted Brad of like, oh, why are you calling? Why are you doing this? Said Ariana, uh, said, told Brad that Ariana got rough with him and Brad uh, shouldn't be supporting that. Now, I just think that is super shitty. You're going to try to win like, oh, Ariana got rough with me. Ariana did this or that. Like, I don't know what the story is there, you know, and and uh, I know Ariana had, did not have a history of getting rough with him. But I, I'm, you know, I don't But I he was still trying to win people over with weird things and using Ariana and like certain behaviors, whether like it was just all these different tactics telling Howie Mandel, she was suicidal telling this. I mean, that's, it's just like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like none of that adds up to what you did. Tom played the victim the entire time. Once Ariana found out, uh, Brad and Ariana had drinks one night and they got home around 1 45 AM and Tom was home and he complained that they can't have parties in the house, even though it was just Ariana and Brad, dude, this is a party free zone, dude. You're not going to have a big party like that day that the, the breakup day, dude, I saw the cars, man. I showed Raquel, dude. The fact that we weren't invited to that breakup party. Ugh. Ariana said that they were just going to watch TV and Tom said it was his TV. And if he wanted to, he can take the TV off into his guest room. You can't do that. Um, you could only do that if you had Sheena's ex that can take the hang the TV in seven minutes. Like other than that, you're screwed, Tom. You're looking at a three hour job. You need that dude. You need that dude that can do the TV in seven minutes. Other than that, that's like a waste of, waste of your energy. But it really seems to be like that war of the roses, the bur like the kind of like misery of just, I don't know. I keep comparing it to myself and I can be so weak that I, I would think I would just be pouting. I would be more Schwartz than Sandoval. I'd be like, Oh, I suck. You know, like I, but this thing of being angry, this thing of it just is like, my God. And it feels like the more good things that came Ariana's way, even though publicly would be like, I, I thought, I, I think I feel so great about Ariana that it truly wasn't that way behind the scenes. By the way, Tom was very upset. Tom wanted to be invited to the correspondence dinner, tried to get invited to the correspondence dinner, didn't realize, didn't want, wondered why he wasn't invited to the correspondence dinner. So I feel like this has been shocking for him that it did not go the way he thought. And in a similar way, you know, it's like how Raquel said at the reunion of like, I just thought that we would break, you know, he would break up and then we would start dating, I guess. Like they feel like they lived in some kind of fantasy world and that they're shocked that it didn't come out the way that they thought it would come out or want. I, it's so confusing to me still. Um, there were many parties at Tom and Ariana's house. Unlike what Tom said, because Tom said that she never let him have parties there said that Ariana would never allow him when he said that Ariana would never allow him to have parties before Tom and Ariana looked very much in love the last couple of years, kissed, hugged, laughed, said, I love yous when together with friends, parties, festivals. I will say like, and Brad knows this, I mean, a billion times over than I do, but when I was around them, I didn't feel like I was seeing an act. I keep telling you about that moment at Coachella just because I thought it was such a romantic, beautiful moment. We were at that Duke Dumont at like, it was like Sunday at five o'clock or something. And the sun was setting and you know, they were just hugging and kissing. And I was like, let me in on this shit, dude. I want to kiss Tom. No, it was just like really beautiful. I remember, I mean, I just remember having those, you know, those moments where you're just like, oh, remember this. That's like a really beautiful moment. And I remember thinking, wow, like eight or eight years in or whenever they're eight years in and they're still like really into each other. So like, I would see things like that. And Cause I've seen couples that are like completely cold with each other don't have. And I was just like, Oh man, I started to get all emotional. I was like, uh. <laughs> so I would see moments that I just, that's why I, I don't know. I just didn't see it. Um, Brad said there is no truth to Tom's claims about Ariana's unaliving herself. Uh, Brad thinks it was very much planned from Sandoval to get Tom to ask questions about his relationship with Ariana on camera and said Schwartz would never ask how Tom and Ariana are doing. So he's saying, in essence, that was pretty staged itself because Schwartz would never do that otherwise unless he was like told to, to ask about that. Um, they don't really talk to Schwartz that much anymore. 
uh, Nick Vile and Brad are both blocked by Jax. Woo wee! I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm still, I think I'm blocked by Jax on Twitter, but I also blocked him on Twitter. I remember that specifically because it was season, <laughs> it was all the way back in season eight of Vanderpump Rules. And it was, it was after, it was after Jax Taylor went on Watch What Happens Live and made fun of Ariana's sexuality and mental health. And that was the, because I because Jax was like, I remember on Twitter that day he was like, anybody that comes at me, they're they're automatically blocked. You know, people kids forget these days what a monster Jax was on Twitter. You know, it's we got to get around the campfire and you know keep the legend of what Jax was like on Twitter out there. But I remember seeing that on Watch What Happens Live and go, and I literally like I'm pulling the ripcord. I'm like, this motherfucker Jax Taylor says this shit. Da 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 da. He needs to look inward. Blah blah blah. And I got the immediate block, and I was like. We did it, Joe. We did it. But I had really tried not to be blocked for so long. I was like, I don't want to be blocked because it was such a gift. Because if you remember, I don't know if Jack still does this. It would be dad jokes before he even had a kid. And or it'd be like him making fun of like 13 year old girls. Or it would be him shouting out products. Like it would be like at Exxon. I love your gas at Starburst. I love pink Starburst just to see, you know, it's like, I just imagined he was just getting free shit from every company. Every time he mentioned them on Twitter, it really, it, it always tickled me. Um, Brad is not living with Ariana and Tom. He does stay and help with the dog. Sometimes, uh, when this first happened, Ariana's friends made a spreadsheet to make sure Ariana wasn't staying alone. Um, Nick, uh, they watched the season two reunion for research purposes. Way to go, Nick. Uh, Nick said what was so eerie in seeing the parallels and what Sandoval was saying back then. And now, yeah, that's been said by Doty. That's been said, like you can do a back to back thing of, and that's the part that also bummed me out. Cause I was like, Oh man, I think part of that is that I want to believe that we can grow and that I'm sad that even when thinking about myself, I can tell you exactly the pattern I fall into each time with a specific situation. And uh, there's a movie. I don't know if you guys have ever seen defending your life with Albert Brooks and Meryl Streep. It's about um, going to heaven and you have to defend your life before you get moved. It's like, it's like uh, you know, the in-between place where you have to defend your life, whether you go to heaven or you go to like someplace else, it's not necessarily hell. And they do a courtroom trial you know, you have a lawyer and you defend your life. There's three examples of like the good that you did in the world and three examples of the bad. And you know, it's like the things that you, and, it, and if you didn't learn all of those things, if you didn't learn the lessons, you go back and you do it again in a different, like, you know, you get reincarnated until you learn that lesson. And I always think about that movie because we do, we always have that. We always have that thing, that thing that life keeps presenting you and seeing if you're going to deal with it any differently than you did before. Um, Brad says he didn't see it coming as well. Um, Raquel wearing the lightning bolt. No one picked up on it because it was a different brand than Kyle Chan, which was Sandoval's lightning bolt of choice. Um, from Brad's understanding, Joe only stayed for Schwartz about a week or two and the till her place was ready. Brad said he just didn't vibe, so he cut ties with Joe early on. Um, let's see. Brad said that even when a person is starting to feel great, they will always be lingering moments of anger and hurt, which I really think that is something that we need to keep in mind is that Ariana can be making as much money as she wants. But I know for myself, even when things are going good, I'll like, you know, flash to something so horrific in my life and it'll just way bum me out or I'll remember something. Ariana processed it and handled it very well, but still went through the emotions of hurt and anger. Um, When Ariana found out, Sandoval yelled at her and blamed her uh, for everything. Uh, you know, it's it's a lot of the same. This wasn't there was not too many big revelations here at all. Um, but it also mentions that Sandoval was a connector, like you know, included uh, Brad a lot. You know. This, it, Brad said if Sandoval would have told him Ariana said she was going to take her life, he would have looked at him and said the same thing that Sheena said to him on the finale. He thinks it's interesting that this is Sandoval's stance because if that did happen, why didn't he call anyone? Sandoval had said this about Kristen too, that Kristen potentially tried to unalive herself. 
So it is interesting that he keeps hitting those same beats. Mm. Brad thinks that Sandoval thought everyone would be mad at him for a little bit, but then it would just all go away. So I thought that was interesting as well. Mm. Um, let's see here. Here is a little, I don't know if this is from the Brad information. It's not really labeled here. Um, it's just a Reddit page. I don't, sorry guys. I don't know what podcast this is from. It's just a screenshot from Reddit. It says Raquel went out of her way to include Ariana in everything. A lot of the time when cheating is happening, that person will distance themselves and Raquel dove in head first and always included Ariana. I knew that too, because I knew even like two weeks before this all broke, they like Ariana and Raquel had shared an Uber together by themselves without Tom. And I was like, this is so dark. Oh, this is still the Brad stuff. Sorry. Brad wants to study Raquel. We all do Brad. Like, listen, like this is, I am Raquel. Brad hasn't talked to Raquel since everything came out. They do not know if Raquel is still in the facility. Brad said that if Raquel is always is away, truly working on herself, he can't imagine the people working with her on herself are advising for her to come back to the show. I've said that same thing a billion times. Okay. In regards to that postcard, the postcard that was sent to, uh, to the house from Raquel. Now there was an originally a letter that nobody opened. And then there was a postcard. The postcard said something about being on their first outing and that she thought of Sandoval. Brad did say it was probably delayed by the time the postcard came in the mail. Nick Vile clarified first outing was at the retreat. And Brad said, yes, he doesn't think Sandoval is writing back, which I don't know why he would think or know that Raquel and Sandoval Brad hopes they love each other because this is a big way to blow up their life if they don't no one is buying that they are on a break the only thing is like I don't know if I necessarily buy they are on a break but I do have to have a feeling if he is the ego monster that he is purported to be it's a real ding that we really dislike Raquel and him so much now he could also be like well I got to I got to say I'm in love with her. I got to be in love with her. I got to show that this can work. So people realize that I did this for true love, but I don't think this was true love. Everything that comes out says this was a guy, a man going through a midlife crisis that also wanted to have sex with other people. And that Raquel was listening to him and looking at him with those doe eyes, like the star that he thinks he is. But then you have that girl in Austin who then I forgot to read this last week. Uh, I, I don't even know if I can find it now. Was it Kaylee or something? She wrote something on Instagram about what it, you know, that Tom is just a friend. And I'm like, dude, why? <laughs> like, okay, yeah. Tom is just randomly friends with, um, you know, people in their mid 20s that are blonde trying to be influencers. That's who his real friends are. I mean, I think there is a world in which we see in this reunion that he's been lying to Raquel as well. He's been lying to her even about that, about Ariana. He was still having sex with her. You know, he was lying to Raquel as well. So there is a world in which you damn well better believe that I believe, you damn well better believe that I believe that he would potentially have sex with this girl in Austin and also still say he's with Raquel or tell Raquel because Raquel's in a facility. She's not going to know. Tom, who's this girl in Austin? Is she a friend? I think it just sets up really wild things that I hope Raquel even thinks about. I hope Raquel in her facility goes, is Tom really the horse to bet on? It seems like he is potentially in a very troubled place and maybe it's best if we're just friends. But I will tell you, I don't know how much I want to see a Vanderpump Rules season 11 where Sandoval is trying to woo Raquel or they're like, will they, won't they? <laughs> you know, like I don't want to see a meet cute. It's not fucking cheers with Sam and Diane. Like I don't get like, are we going to see this? Like, come on, dude, just go on one date, Raquel. I'll make it worth it. Like, I don't want it to be like at the very like season finale. We have like a, uh, a Danny Sandy grease thing of like, tell me about it, stud. You better shape up because I need a man. I need a man. And my heart is set on you. So that would be potentially troubling. And I'm not necessarily here for that. Um, okay. So that is that. Let's see a couple of other things that I thought were interesting this week. Uh, Jax Taylor, you know, which Jax was making fun of everybody coming back and doing their little thing, doing their little, their little dance. He's dancing. He did an interview with Rolling Stone. And I have to say this Rolling Stone, you know, they sold, it used to be Jan Wenner's company, you know, iconic music magazine that I subscribed to for so long. 
since I was a little kid. My dad got me into Rolling Stone and, you know, Rolling Stone has been sold. It is not what it once was, nor will it ever be again. But I have noticed they have hired a lot more pop culture writers, which, by the way, Rolling Stone, what up, man? Get, holler at your boy, dude. I'm ready to write for Rolling Stone. But they've, they've done a lot more pop culture shit. I always see a Rolling Stone thing on Twitter where I'm like, wait, why is Rolling Stone writing about Vanderpump Rules? But okay. They did an interview with Jax, and here's some of the stuff. Did Bravo ever give you an official reason for why you were let go from Vanderpump Rules? And he goes, no, I don't know. If they didn't like me that much, they wouldn't have had me on Watch What Happens Live or the Peacock Show. I think the water is under the bridge with that. We had a time to take a refresher, and here we are now. We all needed a break. I'm not upset or mad about how anything went down. It was actually good for my marriage, my son, and my mental health. His rep says Bravo wanted to take the show in a different direction. And then the reporter says, so it doesn't have anything to do with Faith Stowers. No, I love it. I like it. He's like, where'd you get that name? No, I don't think so. He says, and then the reporter goes, I'm curious how you feel about faith towers. Now I don't want to get into any of that. <laughs> By the way, if Jax comes back, I hope faith comes back. And especially the 97 year old woman that they, you know, did their thing, the hippity dippity in front of Uh question. Who do you still hang out with among the cast of Vanderpump rules? Uh, he says, I probably see Lala four times a week. We go to Disney together. I see Sheena all the time. I see Tom Schwartz all the time. I recently started seeing Katie and Ariana again. I see Kristen. The only ones I really don't see are Stassi and Sandoval question. At least you've taken accountability for the things you've done. Mm -hmm. People's issue with Sandoval is it doesn't seem like he's taken any accountability for his actions or displayed any signs of growth. And Jax goes, I agree. <laughs> he's like, very astute. I agree. I personally don't think he's sorry. I don't. I found it really weird that he cried to Lisa and cried to Tom, but didn't even shed a tear for Ariana. That was odd to me. If you're going to cry for anybody, shouldn't you be crying for your girlfriend? He still hasn't given an authentic apology from what I have been told. Having your PR team write up these statements saying that you're sorry and it's not even in his words, I don't think he cares. I think he cares that it's hurting his image. That's the only thing that's bothering him. He always says, I'm sorry, but there's no but. Just own what you did. Just say you're sorry that's all you got to do and then a question says you're very close to this group and people who've only watched the show may not be aware that for months schwartz joe raquel and sandoval were partying together and essentially going out on double dates and jacks goes i don't really think that they were being that secretive about it they want they went on a ski trip they want on a oh no rolling stone has a typo oh man it says they went on a ski trip ski trip but they printed it as they want a screw on a screen trip. oh don't you hate that when you're right right reading an article on like daily mail and you're really into it and then they have a bunch of typos and you're like oh fuck man i thought i was reading a source of news and i know it's the daily mail but i don't want to be reminded that it's the daily mail and now rolling stone has a oh man Anyways, they want on a ski trip together to Big Bear, all four of them. And when they'd be out together in a restaurant and people would start noticing, they would leave out a back door and sneak off. My question is, how did you get away with this for so long? I'm shocked Ariana hadn't noticed any of this, to be honest. Be careful, Jax. Don't be like, how dare Ariana not notice? There's been a lot of online chatter about you and Brittany returning for season 11. We just can't talk about it right now, unfortunately. I wish we could, Jax, the king of teasing. There was a talk of a Valley Village spinoff of Vanderpump Rules at one point featuring you, Brittany, and Kristen Doty, and some others. He goes, it's definitely not dead, but I can't talk about it. I apologize. There are a lot of moving parts right now, and this interview is happening right in the middle of it. Jax, the king of the tease. Amazing. Oh. Uh, you know, so he's going to be involved in some way. Also, last night, Brandy Glanville seemed to be going through it. Uh, if you read her Twitter, I always hate it because whenever I picture Brandy tweeting, it's usually late at night and you always just figure like how many empty bottles are around you. I know that sounds mean, but I just I, I just it bums me out. But she wrote tweet, tweeted last night after the reunion. This fucking hypocrisy is fucking insane. And then she put a comma and six exclamation points. I never thought I would be friends with half the bitches that fucked my husband while I was married and pregnant. I'm fucking over it with pretty much everyone. Hope she's okay. There's no joke there. I, just, I hope she's okay. Um, yeah. Ugh. Uh, oh, this is actually Lala on her podcast talking about the difference in reactions like I was talking about with that article. And I thought uh, this might be worth hearing. Check this out from uh, from this is from the Give Them La La podcast. The writers asked, which I wasn't aware of this. I read the piece when everyone else did. 
why Ariana got this level of support when Lala was looked at and, and it was, if you make a comparison, way more intense, why it wasn't given the same amount of like, wow, okay, we have a level of respect here. And this woman, I think her name was Raquel Gates, said, you have to be a perfect victim for people to sympathize with you. Being a perfect victim is very, very hard. I mean, we've watched it in some of these trials where men have forced themselves on women and they go through and they say, but was it not true that you held his hand one time? Yep. Was it not true that you sent him a text that said, I miss you? It's like, unless you are a perfect victim, you don't get sympathy. That don't work for me. So I I want to give James another shout out because he's been through the ringer too. Yeah. Difference is he's like me. We shake shit off. Fuck everyone but us. Right. But yes, but the support, I get it. Supporting him being like, you're so funny. Hell yeah, James. But also his heart. Like he, he, his heart was broken. And I'm not saying Raquel, I'm not saying, but he was in a situation and you can tell with the tears and he's been vulnerable this season and just like speaking his truth. Due to so I thought that was interesting. Obnoxious and a narcissist and overbearing and just pure torture mm -hmm. as an outsider looking in. Ariana became background noise. Yeah. 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 And that is not an insult. That's when you're dealing with a Tom Sandoval and that's your partner, you have no control over becoming background noise because they are so much that you almost just retreat. You're like, I can't deal. I'm exhausted. I so relate. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Um, you know, Lala, I think Lala, you know, I don't get to, I don't listen to her podcast. I try not to listen to um reality show podcast but it always you know she always seems like she's on point she does really have that gift of gab so i'm very curious i think she could you know out of all of them i mean my you know i really want to also throw support to shenanigans because she's one of the beginning ones and sheena has gotten fucking tore up over the years i mean go out and check her podcast reviews people have been so cruel and like when i listened like when i've listened to it a couple times like i'll listen to it if i you know before i go on and see what she's talking about it's always you know i'm like oh that's pretty good i like this i i really have always liked it also i wanted to let you know those clips came from the instagram Just account the by wig hello drama b-y-e wig hello drama they have a great breakdown of a lot of vanderpump rules things as well so that's always uh good to look at um let's see before we call it a day folks is there anything else is there anything else uh do you think james deserved more airtime to share his perspective since he was hurt too, Lala said the lack of compassion and rallying around James Kitty. James Kennedy is pretty insane to her. She thinks he has gotten lost in all of this because he has an intense mouth and people think thinks think he deserves all this. She said not to say that people aren't rallying for him because there's been love for James because he is hysterical, but it's coming across as them loving his mouth rather than seeing James having emotions about his best friend and ex-fiance. That's a great point. This was looked at as not a big deal. And maybe that was because James moved on so soon, but let's not forget that Ariana met her guy 10 days after this happened. So both of them moved on very quickly. Lala said for James to not get the same amount of, Oh my God, you were done dirty. But then Lala said, maybe if James and Raquel were, we're still engaged and this happened, then it would be different. Also, I think that's a little different too, because, you know, DJ James Kennedy always had an acid tongue. He always said horrific things, which we covered in part one. So sometimes it is hard when somebody goes that hard on other people to have the most, the most compassion for them, if that makes sense. Um, uh, also Lala and her podcast said she, uh, Lala thinks she got the first part of the reunion five days before it aired. Overall, Lala thought the first part of the reunion was amazing. Um, Lala said the night before they filmed the reunion, she was asleep by 7 p.m. Production kept changing the call time for the reunion. Lala did her own makeup look that day. Well, that was actually a pretty intense makeup look. So, damn. Uh, producers called the cast to get their input on how they wanted the reunion to go. I left Santa. I was like, uh, the, I, I'd like to focus on Schwartz and Katie. <laughs> Santa was like, um, I'd like to focus on Schwartz and Joe potentially the most. And maybe it's like a little small segment about what I did. 
They ask questions like, should we have Sandoval and Raquel out together? Should we talk about other stuff that happened this season or just Scandoval questions? I love this shit. I find this production element so damn fascinating. By the way, if you're on production and listening to this, because I know some of you guys do, I want you on. Lala said that she did ask if we talk about what else happened this season. Uh, however, Lala said that when they would try to talk about other things, it would go back to Scandoval. And like they didn't want to hear Scandoval's opinion on other things that happened this season. Lala thought Sheena should have been sitting on their side of the room. <laughs> Jessica said, uh, I guess that's her co said the second people call Sandoval out for trying to fake cry at the beginning of the reunion, the tears disappeared. I pointed that out as well. Uh, Lala said she loves Lisa and Lisa put on her Instagram that Lala saying dangerous was the wrong word to use. Lala said it wasn't the wrong word to use in regards to her calling Sandoval dangerous. She doesn't know what other word to use in that situation. Lala said that she is not telling people to not engage with Sandoval, but to know who they are dealing with. Um, Lala told herself before the reunion that anytime Sandoval spoke, she was going to tell him to shut the fuck up. And she actually only saw what he said when she watched the reunion, which she said what Sandoval said was stupid, which, you know, we see that. And that's why I think she missed that IUD line that Sandoval came out of the gate with on uh, part two. When the ski trip got brought up, they think Schwartz wanted Sandoval to say, I was the one who invited the girls. Did Katie ever express her feelings about Lala's rekindled friendship with Sheena? Lala said she did express her feelings, but she is not going to share what that exchange was. I like that. I like when friends keep, you know, that certain things private. Lala said they dealt with all of that when they were flying to watch what happens live when the season started airing. Now, when Katie said on the reunion that the same level of loyalty when you and Sheena weren't getting along, you said, if anyone communicates with Sheena, they are dead to me. Lala does not even remember saying anything like that about Sheena. Lala remembers expressing her disdain for Sheena at the time because what Sheena said on her podcast, podcasts are dangerous, dude. I deal with it all the time, dude. As the bad boy of podcasting, you don't think I walk that line every day, man. I'm in, I'm in, I'm, I'm on fire, dude. I'm bad boy. Lala said that she knows for a fact that if it, it was, she was saying behind the scenes, then she would have also said that on camera. She does remember telling Katie in season nine that she felt like she was on an Island and wanted Katie to have her back, which is similar to what Katie was asking Lala for. And Lala said she always had Katie's back when it came to Sheena. For what part do you wish that they had kept in that they didn't for part one? Lala said, honestly, because it was such a long day, she can't remember the sequences of events. She thinks that once she watches all three parts, maybe she will have some memory. That would be a good episode. We get one of those like uh, hypnotists in there of like, Lala, follow this, follow this clock. Okay, you're out. What do you remember about the reunion? Um, she said that she has said this before, but she blacked out after the reunion due to high emotions. Um, people still feel a need to talk about your past. Do you think they will ever get over it? Lala said, no, she doesn't think people will ever get over her past. And she's okay with that. The past is why she is here today and can say things that she says. Sandoval loves to pull out the history books because that's all he has. Lala said her opinion is Sandoval out of all the cast members is the same person that he was. And they were talking about his past because his past is still very relevant to what is happening today. I love that. Lala said, you cannot bring up her past if the behavior does not match it. Um, so this is, you know, oh, she, oh, this Schwartz Lala said Schwartz at the Vander saw Schwartz at the Vanderpump dogs gala. Um, she originally didn't want to go, but ended up going Schwartz was at their table and said that he doesn't have a publicist. Lala's publicist was like, you really need to get someone Schwartz said to Lala's publicist. Well, what about you? And she was like, no, no, I'm not going to help you. <laughs> I love that publicist was like, I know I, I respect myself. Uh, which, by the way, Tom Schwartz's new reality show, I think it's called Life on Mars. It's a, It premieres Monday on Fox. I'm going to at least watch the first episode because I want to see how far Schwartz can put his fingers into his mouth with a space helmet on. Uh, Lala brought up when Schwartz was talking about the worst time of his life with his dad almost dying and his brother being diagnosed with cancer during the reunion. And they panned to Lala and she was making a face. She doesn't want anyone to think she was thinking badly when Schwartz was saying that. She was even thinking about her own dad's health issues who passed away and what dealing with that was like and a divorce would feel like. Lala did say that when Schwartz was going through this and Lala talked to Katie about this, Lala said, had the relationship had been solid, Schwartz always picked her and all these issues happen and he had to break away and not give her much time. This isn't written very clearly. Lala knows she would have been more understanding, but Lala said Schwartz never in the relationship gave her time ever. And that Katie was always on the back burner. Um, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. I got to tell you, man, when I read these things, I, I really like Lala on interviews and podcasts and even on the reunion. For some reason, I just, uh, you know, in certain scenes, I thought we're like, eh, during the season. Because I thought there was an element of, 
character like the dawn of like you know squirting all over the bed in havasu to me that was sometimes just a, a little silly and i didn't necessarily believe it it felt like a characterization more than something that was truly coming from lala herself um i could be completely wrong about that that was just something you know Ooh, ooh. okay this was from i found it this is from the uh the Austin influencer that Sandoval was staying with a couple of times. And I got many people like on a couple separate occasions, people were sending me photos of them and she wrote uh, anxiety tip. If you hang out with a famous person, be prepared that someone will likely take your picture, sell it to the tabloids, put your face on blast, tell everyone you're dating and give you the worst anxiety you've ever experienced. Thank you to my closest friends for being there and checking on me right now. PS I'm not dating Tom PSS find better hoppies. <laughs> okay, girl. Like, listen, you know what you signed up for. I have a feeling you were a fan of Vanderpump rules. So come on, <laughs> come on. Uh, you know, she's on Instagram. She's th that's like, yeah, well, welcome to the jungle. Uh, I'm sorry that you're not potentially liking it here. And I really, I'm going to go on record as saying, I don't think, I mean, they, they might not be dating, but I don't think it was completely unromantic or unsexual or whatever. That's it, folks. What a week it was. I really, and I got to tell you, I'm going to plug this again because I did a solo episode on Tuesday where I talked about the succession finale and I talked about my tribute to Tina Turner. And I really, really dug that. And I talked a little bit about Summer House. I thought that was a really great solo episode that I did at the time. And I didn't really think about, but afterwards I felt so pumped up and I felt so happy about it. And I really, uh, and also just Tina Turner. Once again, I just, I've been thinking about her all week because I watched that documentary after she passed away last uh, Friday. And I just, it just really inspired me. What a, what a woman, what a, what, you know, put so much good out there in the world. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, we can do that too, if we want to. And, I, and we're going to start in two weeks after Scandaball. It's going to be, we're going to start doing good stuff. Uh, okay. Thank you guys. Uh, I hope you are not exhausted of me yet. We've got two more weeks of this, but thank you for supporting the show. If you do like this, please rate it five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Consider uh, subscribing to the, the the YouTube, do all that stuff. And the Patreon, patreon.com patreon .com forward slash so bad it's good. I'm thinking about you guys. Thank you for all the good stuff you've sent my way. And thank you for always the good thoughts about my mom. She is aware of those, uh, very much so. Um, we got a postcard today from Megan Rawlings, a listener. Um and it was very nice from Seattle. She really, really liked that. And uh, it's tough out there, folks. So let's take care of each other. And I will talk to you bright and early on Monday. And I'll probably talk to you before then uh, over on Patreon. And uh, uh, yeah, I'll try to answer DMs and stuff this weekend. I don't want to say goodbye, but I'm going to say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.